Hey lovely folks doing today, it's Cash Cow back with another video. Today I'm gonna give you another playlist that I started called Lucky Seven. So basically if you have these seven comics, it's guaranteed to rise up in value for this character. Today I'm doing Adam Warlock. I know people are still hyped and buzzed off of uh, seeing the cameo at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 where she's like what should I name it? I should name him him. So you guys are getting ready to see that. Like, He's coming. It's only a matter of time. I'm, I'm fascinated by it. I want to see it. You want to see those seven comics? Stay tuned. First one out of seven. Got Warlock and the Infinity Watch number one. I feel like this is the sleeper pick of the com of, of all the comics. Cause right now this is hovering a very low value. People aren't really paying attention to it. And I feel like once you give Adam Warlock a chance and he's actually appears in the MCU that this comic will spike. It will see some value. Now you have this is a new stamp variant. So I would suggest anybody that's willing to invest in it get the new stem variants. Like new stem variants are tenant are actually becoming more valuable than any other copy of it. People are paying attention to it now. They figured it out that new stem variants are harder to find. It's uh, actually the first appearance of, uh, what's it, the Infinity Watch, I want to say, Infinity Watch, maybe? It's a team called the Infinity Watch, got mm, Moon Dragon, Drax the Destroyer, if I'm not mistaken, but I mean, it's just, it's... You can't help but invest in this copy. And this is a sleeper pick out of all of them. Because nobody's paying attention to it. Which I don't understand because when Marvel shows their cameos and you know a character's coming, you would figure like more copies would sell for more than what they are now. Like, people know it's coming. Marvel don't show cameos for no reason. Like, you know it's coming. So why not invest in it now and save yourself a little bit of money, right? It's, you know, that's a smart thing to do. That's what I would do. Number two, we got Strange Tales 178. It's actually the first appearance of Magus. Hopefully I pronounced that right. His names are something else sometimes. But it's actually an evil version of Adam Warlock. And I figure like they're gonna actually premiere him first as a villain. And then after that he'll become a superhero and over time he'll actually become a superhero that helps out whatever team they have going in the future. So I feel like, why not take a chance on that? Because they're going to start them off as a villain. But they're not going to finish with them being a villain. That's the key thing to it. So actually, the first appearance of uh, the Church of Truth, if I'm not mistaken, and the first appearance of Matriarch, which is actually the leader of the Church and Truth. Hopefully I'm not mispronouncing that or misquoting that or nothing. But uh, I feel like it's, it's a good shot to take a chance on it. Like it's, uh, it hasn't got, it hasn't reached its peak yet. I feel like it's only a matter of time before it reaches its peak. And then after that, 
next thing you know, a affordable comic book becomes a a hundred or hundred and fifty dollar comic book and next thing you know you're like, Oh man, I should have grabbed I should have grabbed them when they were that. Like that's how the comic book market is. Like next thing you know, stuff just pops and you're in the wind, like, well why didn't I why why didn't I why why didn't I invest in it? Like I should've did it and I should have bought this copy for this and that. The biggest mistake we make as investors is thinking that we have time. You don't have time. So if you have the extra funds and it's not taken away from any bills or any things that your family may need or anything that you may need, invest in it. Stockpile it. Put it up can't go wrong with that like this basically these comics are stock some of them actually hold more of a detachment a more of an attachment sorry of an attachment because there are favorite characters there are books that was hard to come by when we enjoy them but then you also have to separate the fact that that's not how you survive it's, you know, you got to do what you got to do. You can't eat a comic book, you know. A comic book can pay your bills, but you can't eat a comic book. With that being said, I feel like this is, this is how they're going to introduce him. As he'll be Magus. A Magus. Don't quote me on that. But they're going to introduce an evil version of him first to get fans interested in him. And the fact that you know it's coming in the MCU is the crazy part because you know it's coming. So I'm like, I'm seeing eBay and I'm seeing other sellers and all that. And I'm seeing like, okay, Warlock is okay. It's bubbling. It's bubbling. And it's just still bubbling. When he's already been confirmed once they did the cameo. Like, the Marvel's track record is once you have been in a cameo, you have been confirmed. That's it. You're coming out. What you think? Like, comment, share, subscribe if you like the material. I'll continue to post and we'll have fun with this. Number three. Warlock number one. This is when it's finally revealed that he has the soul stone. So when Thanos was collecting all the stones and an infinity gauntlet and, and endgame and all that, they they never show you what he had to do to get the soul stone other than Black Widow sacrificing herself and all whatever that crazy stuff was. How does he get the Soul Stone from Warlock? Big question to ask because I always ask that to myself. Like, okay, what did Thanos do to, to get that? Because Warlock is a very, he's, he's a very good adversary. Like, he's not going down without a fight. So, what did he do? Like, scratching my head, thinking, like, how, how did he get that off of him? But this is when it's finally revealed that he has the Soul Stone. And I feel like Gardens of the Galaxy 3 will go into that soul realm and I feel like in a way they're going to try to revive Gamora and go that way about it in the route and see how that goes and then in the process they'll run into Adam Warlock and whew, you got some mess coming so but it's Warlock number one 
when he finally reveals that he has the soul stone. I love the fact that they're getting ready to go into space. That's definitely different. And I just enjoy the fact that Marvel sticks to the comics and they're just continuing to build and they stick to the script and it happens. You're like, okay, that's the way it happened in comics. And then they keep it that way and you're like, okay, this they're taking their time with this. This is this is enjoyable. Like I I love this. I I can't give me more. Give me more. You know. I can't wait to see uh Black Widow in a few weeks and see where that goes and see how that goes. It's it's a lot of speculation. You know, you might see a few characters in that or a cameo from that that builds onto the future, but that's just the way Marvel is. So give them their credit and their respect and let's keep it pushing. Next, number four, we got Marvel premiere number one. This is the first appearance of his new costume that he wears. Also, he finally starts wearing the Soul Stone but it's not identified into Warlock number one. So it's also another key comment. His first costume. So what you recognize Warlock is wearing is what he finally starts wearing with this. Decent book. Um, you can find it for under 100 right now. low mid grade I don't think it's going to stay that way but don't quote me on that I'm just giving you guys my opinion and how things I how I feel things are going to go so if it doesn't go that way then hey yeah, it is what it is you guys be like, hey, Cash Guy, you was talking all this crazy mess and da da da. But I'm just like, if for Marvel to show a, a cameo of him at the end, you know that his comics are going to spike. You know they're coming. You know that people are going to invest in him. You know, like, it, it, it just, it's a no brainer. Like, you know, one day you will see Adam Warlock on. The screen in the MCU movie because they're gonna do Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 and he's gonna be in that. And then after that, as the story progresses, he becomes a hero. So you know, these comments are gonna continue to rise because you're gonna continue to see him. It doesn't end with him dying off. I mean, he, he does die in the comic. But then he comes back, and then he's a total different person. So, like, uh, maybe I'm thinking crazy or not. But like, I, like it's been said, out of sight, out of mind. So people don't hear about it right now, so they're not worried about it. The majority of people follow what's being told. Instead of just paying attention to... Hey, this is the future. This is where it's going to go. This is how it's going to go. And it's only a matter of time. So I need to get myself ready. You're going to see him. You're going to see him again. That's number four. Sorry, y'all. Allergies. Spring. You know, close to summer. Now I get... Thor, number 166. This is the second full appearance of him or Adam Warlock. And he actually has the first battle with Thor. So as I'm thinking in my brain, like maybe, okay, maybe that's how they introduce him in. Because 
if I'm not mistaken, Thor is actually supposed to, you know, be out there before Thor Love and Thunder, sorry, is supposed to actually be out there before Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. So maybe that's how they introduce him is because he's introducing that. Where he's introducing Thor Love and Thunder and he's battling Thor in space or he's finally having that fight. And this comic is actually pretty solid. Like it it holds a good mark where right now you can get it for maybe forty to seventy. But I guarantee once he's finally on the screen, you won't be able to get it for that. You can take that chance if you want to. It's up to you. But I feel like this is going to value... This is going to... Because his first appearance, his first full appearance, and his first cameo appearance have spiked in value. So now they're becoming harder to obtain and they're becoming out of... They're getting to the realm where they're out of some people price range. You know? So, the second appearance is what they will always go for if they can't get the first appearance. As an investor or just a comic book lover, recognize that. Always recognize that. If they can't get their hands on that, that's what this is what they're going to go after. So, why not get the second full appearance of this character? And you still have the second full appearance, which is is valuable. It may not be as valuable as his first or his cameo first appearance, but it's still valuable. Number five. Fantastic Four 67. And I actually love this cover. This epitomizes everything that Warlock's about with the cocoon. And you see the cameo at Guardians of the Galaxy 2 at the end. And you're like, oh, he's coming. He's coming. Like, it's, it's finally happening. But you see the cocoon. You see him at the bottom. And then the lady names him him. And you're like, they're finally doing the Adam Warlock. They're finally, like, they're finally gonna put this man on the screen. This cover is actually, this is probably my favorite comic book in the whole Adam Warlock run, is this cover. I love it. Like, how can you not love it? They, they have the cocoon up there. He's bursting out. You got Fantastic Four and everybody else going crazy. Trying to figure out, like, who the heck is this and what's going on? This copy is actually, these have seen an uptick in value. And I feel like they're, con they're going to continue to go up in value. Because a few years ago, you can get them for $20 to $40, maybe. Now, if you can get it for under $100, I would suggest that you snatch it up. Especially a decent grade. Definitely get that and hold on to that. Because it's going to see its day. It's only a matter of time. Marvel has confirmed that with you. You know? Like, I, I don't get it sometimes with speculators. Like, they, they wait. Or the masses follows what everybody else is doing instead of just jumping on stuff now and then that way you don't have to worry about it down the road like I have these comics now so once he's introduced or it's a trailer for him I'm set because I have multiple copies of every comic I've shown you so I'm ready I'm just having fun and waiting on it to happen and I want to go to the movies and see it you know this is actually his second most valuable comic in the run. And this is his first, not, not his first cameo. Fantastic Four number 66 is the origin and when he's mentioned. 
and then this is his first cameo of it. And, you know, everything's broken down, and then you finally understand, okay, Adam Warlock, and who he is, or what, what he's gonna be. But, I mean, how can you not love that cover, man? Like, look at that cover. Look at that. And it doesn't matter if it's low grade or Oh, it's only a 2.5 and all that. A highly sought after comic will always be highly sought after. Never make that mistake in thinking, oh, okay, well, it's only a 3.4 or whatever, you know, whoever, you know. People are still going to want it. If they can't get their hands, because getting higher grades as the book becomes valuable is harder to get. So they're gonna go after what they can afford. Everybody that's walking around is not a millionaire. I'm not a millionaire. So I'm gonna get my hands on what I can afford, but the smart person is gonna start low and invest low when these comics aren't that hot and people aren't really worried about it. I can snatch up as many copies as I want, which I have been able to do, and just sit back and wait. That's number six. Last but not least, number seven. The lucky seven. The most valuable comic, the highly sought after one that people will be going after. Thor number 165. That's the first full appearance of This is going to be the comic that sees the more higher value, value in return. And people are going to want this more because it's the first full appearance. And the first cover appearance. So he's on the cover. Fantastic Four number 67, he's not on the cover. It's just a cocoon. This one, you see him. He's on it. So I feel like Eventually, with Thor: Love and Thunder, he's gonna be some. He, he may play some part in that movie. I feel like he will. I mean, he has the first battle with him, his first full appearance and cover appearance. It's a Thor comic. I feel like it's only a matter of time before he's put in that realm. And then, if you if you have watched the movies, you know that Thor can go anywhere. Thor is like a nomad. He can travel space he can go to earth he can whatever it's he going wherever he needs to go to do whatever he needs to do but this will be the most highly sought after comic of adam warlock i guarantee it now that's not to take away from the fact that if you have higher grades of other comics yeah you'll make you'll make a better profit but if you want to actually just nice, like nice, get nice with it, Thor number 165 is where you need to go. And right now, I've seen several copies that have actually went for under $200. Knowing that when he finally gets his day in the MCU, that ain't happening. Just quote me on that. I mean, Marvel has shown you their track record that they tend to do characters very well. Whoever writes this, the screenplay and the edit it is editing. Sorry, is they're, they're on their job. So give it a shot and if you can get this comic book. If if you have to save your money. Get this comic book out of all the other ones. This will be the highly sought after one. This is Cash Cow with another video. Lucky Seven, my premiere. Cash Cow.